<laughs> Let me tell you, this first session of a game never goes as expected. So, I know this. I've been doing this for over 20 years now, which is a crazy number for me. Um, I told you this. I warned you. I warned me. But for some reason, I was arrogant. My hubris. <laughs> uh, so, here is how it went down. Uh, whether you have decades of experience or days of experience, this is what happens. So today on A Bard's Life, we're going to cover how to GM your first game. So the game started out rough. I slept terribly that day because life happens. And so I went ahead and knew that before the game, I had individual calls with them and I helped them create the characters. I went through most of their numbers. I finalized backstories. Normal so far, as expected. But then I realized as I drove over, the third player didn't fill out their questionnaire or have their numbers finalized. So two out of three completed, not bad, not my first time. I can handle this, not a big deal. That player had a lot of life things happen over the last week or so, like big life happenings, not good. Anyways, life happens, moral of the story. The one player was terribly unprepared we get it knocked out in time when I'm there after food is done. So we're not behind much on time. This works out well. So as we went on, I didn't realize that I'm over-focused on character creation. And unlike I wanted, I have not been working on weaving the characters together and sorting out how the characters and their plots will begin to move. And so I assumed things were on course. I assumed. I have no map, like no physical map. I have no basic details. I have no monsters or how they work or any of that given to the players. And so it's all in my head. I've put time to think it up. I have nothing to give them. They have a blank slate. They have nothing to work with. The pitch is all I can rely on. Thank God I did the pitch. <laughs> The terrible thing about things being in your head, no matter how thought out they are or how amazing they are or written or whatever, your players don't have telepathy. So you screwed, <laughs> but we play the game. They get to start in a bar because cliche and one of the players requested it. I thought it was kind of comical. Kudos to him. But then the strangest thing starts to happen. Like, really strange. Nothing. Silence. I sit there and I stare at them. I'm expectantly waiting for them to do something. They have their characters, they have their backstory, they know about the town, they're in a bar. Dead silence. Not good. And so, they don't know to talk to the bartender. I have a bartender ready, the character's written. They just ignore the bartender. Uh, they order drinks. Okay, shit. <laughs> they don't talk to the travelers. They don't talk to anything I mentioned. They hardly talk to each other. And so I'm at a freaking stalemate. My brain is freezing from being utterly fascinated by this happening. I'm also exhausted. And so my brain locks up hard. So I gave them nothing to work with and I have a conflict with no NPCs. And so I have no working mechanisms to get the players to the plot. You need NPCs. After a while of staring at me blankly, it was so bad. They left the bar after a meal of awkward soup and then things started to shift. I threw out my plan completely. The one from the basement, the one I was passionately in love with, so proud of, so chummed. This is when I start to get my feet under me. So I drew them around town and eventually the trail led them to a house that was broken into. They worked as a team to get in quickly to save the civilian, keep the lights on because my plot is all based around darkness to some degree, and they defeated the monster. 
it had a curious ability about it that I hope they paid attention to. They might have noted, maybe not. It'll eventually get figured out. Anyways, they learned a bit about each other's strengths and worked together and made a ton of jokes, ton of tangents. So many references though, I'm pretty impressed by their pop culture references. It turned out to be a pretty fun, pretty well-run game for the first game. Then came the kicker. At the end of every game, I ask for feedback. I thrive off feedback. I thrive off negative feedback, oddly enough. Um, it has to be critical or something I can learn from, but over the years, this works for me. Don't do it if you can't handle it. I know some people actually crumble under this, so disclaimer. I ask for good feedback and bad feedback at the end of every single game. Um, two positives and a negative. I usually do it... I'll make an episode about this if you care. There's a lot of nuance to it. So, I get some feedback, all right. Let me grab my notes. Did I put them away? Oh, no, no, no. Ah, goodbye! Okay, so session one. Normally, I expect... It's too railroady because you have to push things in a certain direction to get some momentum. Once the momentum's in place, the players will go freaking ham. They don't need help. They will make their own plot. They will make mistakes or not make mistakes. Either way, they'll drive themselves. Not your problem. But yeah, normally I expect it to be too railroady in the first games as you shoehorn plot at the players and you try to get things in motion. I got something a little more painful than that which really surprised me. Two people agreed, so two out of three, <laughs> that there were blanks in the setting. And by that I mean, they didn't know what to expect of the monsters. The main antagonist, like the main problem of the world. And so I didn't explain how the monsters worked <laughs> because reasons. Anyways, that's two of their professions their main thing. Shit. Uh, next, there were no maps. So, it really means that I slacked on my communication of the maps and the structures that they were in. So, I need to work on my communication and descriptions and things like that. Or, come to the table with maps. Like, if I draw on a little dry erase map, like, uh, I prefer hexes. Um, because squares are silly and going diagonal is dumb. Um, but not good. Um, kind of normal for beginning, but whatever. I need to work on it. There were also other negatives, such as one of the players was super bummed that they came to the table empty-handed regarding their character. Dude, it's cool. <laughs> like. You actually did super well. Like, you roleplayed your character great. Like, not a big deal. I actually had a really good time myself with your character and how you worked in, so... We rolled with it. You're fine. With the negatives out of the way. Now to the scariest thing. No jokes, no hyperboles. They all agreed. They had fun. And they're looking forward to the next game. <laughs> Sounds like a joke. It's not. So this means that I have to run another game. I love running games, but I feel like I utterly screwed the pooch on this session. So they loved something that was not what I intended. Meaning, now I have to work with what's in front of me instead of what I have written without all the calculated stuff and the hooks that I already have. So now I have to do, take all of this and throw it away and start with what I have. Bittersweet victory, yes. So how do you recover from the first session? <laughs> Even if you took this wrong train of thought, how do you make sure that you learn from your mistakes? Um, I will see you after the second session and we'll see how this recovery goes. The only saving grace I had was that the questionnaires were there. They role-played greatly because they knew their backgrounds. I'll be honest, I think those questionnaires saved my ass. Um, 
I will see you after session two and see if everything explodes. <laughs>